A Parent Wins, An Adventure of a Lifetime. A global expedition dedicated to collecting stories of environmental and cultural preservation while conducting marine research aboard sailing vessel Resilience. You know, we're on this expedition and the mission is to find whales, to find cetaceans and, and uh, specifically killer whales, but really any cetacean is the highest of interest. And they had been sort of ghosts the entire way south. And the day we left Bahia Magdalena, we came out of the harbor and the ocean just came alive. We worked our way south down the coast towards uh, Cabo San Lucas and just the life just surfaced everywhere. We anchored in Cabo San Lucas and got the boat ready and uh, the next day we were getting a bunch of Jared's colleagues aboard. When we got all these cetacean researchers aboard, our real goal was to get to Sea of Cortez. We looked at the weather and it was closed out. It really didn't look like we had a chance and, and I had been talking to Jared about it days or weeks leading up that this weather, you have these winds called Norte, North winds. And uh, we found this little window and it looked like the only window that we were gonna get to get up to Sea of Cortez and get up to the La Paz area the entire 10 days that we had these folks aboard. So we took the window, we pushed hard, we came into an anchorage at night uh, into the Sea of Cortez. We had the anchor up and we were leaving before sunrise the next morning just so that we could push on and make it north. We had a lot of encounters with dolphin and with other whales and all day long, but then we got on this heat run, which I didn't know what a heat run was, but a heat run basically is all these males that are all worked up because there's females around and it's breeding, you know, it's time for them to breed and so on. And they just get all worked up and kind of in a competition and they just swim all over the place together. They, they sometimes will show, you know, acts of aggression a little bit and trying to show what they've got. And, and trying to impress the ladies. Right, bef yeah, right before that, we saw a uh, mom with a brand new, brand new calf, like, like maybe a week at the most. Yeah, and, and usually when these mothers have their calves, they, they go into heat or what we call estrus pretty soon afterwards. And that's what really brings in these males um, to try to jump on that opportunity to, to breed with this female. And of course, he's not the only male here, so we got some challengers. Yeah, lots of, lots of challengers. And I think when it, when it first started, it was like seven whales. And by the time it was done, it was probably close to 15 because other challengers came in. At one point, they're just going in circles. We're not getting any closer to them, but they're coming over to us and working kind of around us. And, you know, we shut off the engine. We're just floating there. And it's wild to see that creature come so close and like come under the boat and beside the boat. You can feel the ocean change and the wake that they're leaving slap against the hull and the, the water that they're moving with their tails, the pectoral fins, moving the boat a little bit and just totally changing the ocean. Uh, we got up to La Paz and then I had to break the news to everybody aboard that, you know, we made it there, that's great, but uh, we had just read on all of our grip files, on our weather files, for the next three days. We are in La Paz right now, uh, which is the capital of Baja. It's on the east coast, and we shot up here with a, a group of folks uh, trying to chase killer whales and other cetaceans. We took a risk coming up here because there are these things called the Norte winds, the north winds, and they're crazy strong uh, this time of year. We got up here and, and they, uh, they arrived, so we sort of have been stuck in La Paz for three days. And this anchorage is absolutely insane. If you look at the screen here, for the last three days, this is what our boat has been doing at anchor. During the day when the tide changes, there's about three or four knots of current here right now the boat kind of just goes beam to the wind like we are right now and you'll see. We dance over here and then at night we go back here. As the current's coming in, the wind's still blowing 20, 25. We saw up to 35 knots of wind blowing us this way. Right now we're at 18. It's still pretty rough, but it keeps going back. Tomorrow should be a little bit nicer, but it's been absolutely insane here. The first day that we were in La Paz, I actually stayed on the boat because the weather was wild, but uh, Jerry got to shore and he just happened to step into this artist shop uh, that had a lot of artwork that was marine based. 
and this artist's name was Miguel. And we heard about him and we were able to go the next day and, and go meet Miguel and talk to him about uh, the area and about wildlife in this area, which he's super passionate about. It's the basis of all of his artwork. And he had a, it was really interesting to hear what he had to say. Hi, I'm Miguel Salazar. I'm a marine biology student and artist based in La Paz, Baja California Sur. And this is my art gallery and store. Well, there's no other place in the world that has this much pelagic species interacting with each other. Like having all these whales, all, all these cetaceans in general, all this richness of species here are very, very important for the world. And that's why it has to be protected. That's why we have to raise awareness that this place is very important. And that's my goal with the art, um, with this project, Hombre de Mar. I want to, to show people, to get to everyone through art, what the ocean means. I think that sometimes people just lose the actual purpose of interacting with animals. And here in Baja, the orca has become like a fever. People want to come just to swim with the orcas. And it's beautiful because before all of these images happened in social media, people were scared of them. And I think that it's very nice that people know now that they're so intelligent and they don't see us as food. But I think that the balance is going to the other way. And it has become something about harassment more than an actual pure interaction with them. And I think that it's important to notice that. To notice that our pictures are not more important that, than the, the actual lives of these animals. Just the fact that we have the orcas here let us know how rich on species and on animals and on everything this ocean is. It's a paradise and we have to protect it so it stays like that. We went to go meet Miguel. We expected to you know, hear about his work and you know, he, he does this incredible artwork and we expected to hear you know, more about that and hear about his passions with it and why he does it. He's a biology student and an artist and you know, super interesting. Um, and very passionate about the ocean, of course. But, you know, we, we got a lot deeper than that. Um, we were able to hear from him a lot of concerns, and not just he has, but he's, he's definitely an advocate for bringing awareness to uh, just the treatment of animals. And actually, we, we spoke to a, another woman as well, a colleague of, of Jared's that is from Mexico and lives in La Paz, and we weren't able to meet her in person, but we got her on, on Zoom. and. Uh, we were able to speak to Vanessa and she brought up the same thing. Hi. Hey, Vanessa. How's it going? Good to meet Fine, you. Fine, and you? Nice to meet you too. Can you tell us uh, a little bit more about killer whales in Mexico and, and your work here uh, regarding them? I'm not a scientist and I, I don't intend to be one. What I'm interested mainly at the moment in Mexico because of the lack of information that we have is good practices and is the respect that these animals deserve that I feel, well, I don't feel, it's been documented and this happened in May last year that, 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 that there is like an obsession with orcas in Mexico because you can swim with orcas in Mexico. The law says that you cannot swim with baleen whales and sperm whales, but yes, you can swim with the rest of the cetaceans, which mm. I personally don't think it's wrong if you do it properly, but that's the thing. Like properly can be very subjective. And it got to the point in Mexico in May last year where it was insane, like people started sending me pictures uh, of a family of four orcas with 21 pangas chasing them. So I think we are very, very lucky to be able to, to be underwater with these creatures. 
I think we are very lucky to be able to get photos and footage and show it to the world. But I got to the point where I don't know anymore if, if, if the government probably should forbid it because as I said, it's out of control, it's out of proportion. So what I did last year was uh, good practices, not a manual, I cannot call it manual because it's not like, like that, like the government, like approved by the government or anything, but it's just a suggestion. It's a document that I did with a marine biologist. Both of us decided like, like if nobody's doing anything about it, let's just do something about it. And, and we talked to experts around the world who swim with orcas, people from Norway, people even from other places that it's not specific orcas, but that know how to do good practices of swimming with cetaceans. So, so that's, uh, yeah, mainly what I want to do is to talk to the tour operators, to the tourism, to the guides, you know, to make them understand what an orca is from the perspective of a psychologist and an educator. And, and do you see any changes happening in, in the last few years, Vanessa, or is it more like a, a continual ramp up of the excitement um, around killer whales? But um, do you respect. see, yeah, do you see some, some more respect from some of the operators and uh, those who are, are seeing them repeatedly? I see some operators that are super, super open, you no, know, to say like, like when we uploaded this document that is for captains, for guides, for everyone to have it for free, you no. Know, oh. uh, I saw lots of people that, yeah, they were like open. Yes, I want to do things right. I, I think that it, even though there's people that yes, no, they are like trying to change their mind or people that are like, I don't even know why, I, I don't even want to know when the orcas are around, no, because I, I don't even tell me, no, I don't want to go. There are still people that do it for the money and that's the truth. And we were able to talk about balance and what's right and healthy and about respect. You know, it's just like if you were chasing a person around trying like a paparazzi, if you will, and trying to just get in their face, these, they have their own space too and they deserve their own respect. And it's interesting to hear from these folks about that you know, problem and, and about solutions, which is really sweet. We were blown in La Paz for three days and it was finally time to go. And we pushed forward and we were gonna make a circumnavigation of Isla Espiritu Santo. That anchorage and that island is just absolutely incredible. We, we went ashore and the amount of the birds and the wildlife and the, the water and the colors and, and the, the cacti on the shore and everything place was just full of life. Miguel, uh, the previous day, had told us how much he loves where he's from. He loves his home. He loves this place. And, you know, we, we thought we understood, but going to a place like Espiritu, you know, really showed us just a tiny taste of why and what's out there. So we left to Spiritu and we worked our way south. We were working our way back to Cabo San Lucas eventually and also we really wanted to see a lot of the life that we had seen before there. It was the end of the day and we came upon this mother humpback and a very, 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 very fresh, fresh newly born calf. Um, the youngest that anybody's seen. I mean, this calf was hours old, if not less. And that moment was incredible. Seeing the mother hold the calf up on her pectoral fin and just swim with her, swim with the, the calf and help the calf lift up to breathe and come back down and just watch that process. Uh, yeah, that's, that's one of those moments. I don't I really don't think I could describe it and really share with somebody how that feels. But, you know, it, it was amazing to see this creature, this massive animal, that will be, you know, hopefully on this planet for a very long time, to be there at the very beginning of its life, and to see the mother help it come into this world, it just makes you think of, of you know, the future sort of generations of these, of these animals. And it just reminds you of how much is going on in that ocean and in the world and the planet that you just don't have no idea and don't think about. And we got to share this moment that for those whales is significant and spectacular. We're wrapping up the trip, we're headed back to Sacaba San Lucas and 
10 days had come and gone and we never did see that killer whale. We, we held out hope the entire time and what we did find is that, you know, just like uh, you know, Jared had mentioned, you start a research project or an expedition, you have your expectations, you have your goals. You start an expedition like we're starting and we're doing right now and we have our mission, but it, you never know what's going to happen. You never know what you're going to run into. And you might not get what you're looking for, but you'll find something else. You know, sometimes when you go on an expedition, you don't really fully understand the, the take-home message from it until weeks, months, or years later. You know, we're human, and, and you know, in all our humanity, we really have to make an attempt to understand this planet that we live on, the other animals that we coexist here with, and how to be good neighbors with them. You know, we, you know, we as humans like to see ourselves as being very empathetic and understanding. And when we can extend that beyond our own species, I think that really sets us apart. And, uh, and it, in, in fact, the more we study other animals, like killer whales, for example, the more we realize that it doesn't actually set us apart. But at least, you know, knowing that it sets us apart from many other animals gives us a bit of a responsibility to, uh, to look after them, look after the planet, and in so doing, look after ourselves and our future and, and the future of our grandchildren. Through our travels through Mexico and, and this experience that we've had all, already and, and so far, I think back on what Luis Brady said when we interviewed and spoke with her at the top of the mountain in Sitka, Alaska. And, you know, she was talking about respect for one another, respect for human beings to human beings, and we were talking about the world and basically getting along, but we were also talking about respect for nature. You know, and obviously that resonates with what Vanessa, you know, was saying to us when we had our Zoom and Miguel. And, you know, it's just, it's interesting. Uh, Jared mentioned that if a species, if a group of killer whales, if a pod were to die off, that culture is lost. And that's so similar that resonates completely with, with humanity. You know, we're trying to talk to people and, and work to share stories of people preserving culture and environment. We've just gone down the west coast of North America and we're beginning to go down Central America. And it seems everywhere we go and everyone you talk to, you're gonna find passionate people that care about where they're from and that are, are doing something pretty incredible. All this beyond the mission and beyond the research, I, I hope to gain perspective. Perspective on life and, and what it is and who we are in relation to each other. And I don't mean just each other as person to person, but I also mean animal to animal and, and species to species. And, and I think somewhere in us, we all find like the, there's something special there and, and we can feel it. And you know, for now I don't know anything, but I do feel, and I feel strongly, that we should want to protect each other and to protect other species and to respect other life. So I, I can't wait to just keep on going 